this week we have studied a number of concepts related to phonology. We have studied phonemes, for example, which are sounds that you can use to distinguish one word from another. We have studied phonotactics, which are combinations of sounds that cannot go together. We're going to see that all of these phenomena are also present in sign languages. Okay, so the very first one, the most basic one, is minimal pairs. Again, minimal pairs are words where there's only one sound that's different between them, like pat and bat. Sign languages are work exactly the same way. For example, on the left here, we have the British Sign Language word cruel. And on the right, we have the BSL word for sweet. As you can see, the one in, uh, they both have the same uh, hand shapes, one the index finger pointed, they both have the same motions upwards, and they have the same rotations where you end up seeing the knuckles. However, they end in different locations, their contact is in different locations. The first one has it on the throat, the second one has it on the side of your mouth. So there's two things here. First, these two words are minimal pairs because they are identical in everything hand shape, um, motion, rotation. They're identical in everything except for that one detail, the location of their contact. Because that's the only difference between them, the location, uh, these two words are minimal pairs. There's only one difference between them, the location of contact. And because these two words are minimal pairs, we also know that those two locations are phonemes because they are the thing that's helping us distinguish between the meaning cruel and the meaning sweet. So sign languages have minimal pairs where the signs differ in only one of their components and that component would be a phoneme. As we saw last week, there are several ways that we can describe a uh, word in a sign language and all of these are essentially going to be their phonemes. And same as we had consonants and vowels, which are different type of, types of phonemes in spoken languages, we're going to have different types of phonemes in signed languages. For example, hand shape, direction of your hand, relationship between the two hands, the motions of your hands, their location, and any non-manual features with uh, your lips or your eyebrows. So these are going to be the phonemes that make up a word in a sign language. And each of those phonemes is going to have phonological features like we saw in spoken languages. So let's focus on hand shape, which is just one type of phoneme. So as you can see here, we can use several features to describe hand shapes. For example, the feature of selected fingers, which are which of the fingers are active in the sign. You can have just the index, these two, these four, etc. There's um, so there's a feature that tells you which are the fingers that are engaged in the sign. There's a feature of flexing, which tells you what the fingers are doing. They might be extended, curved, flattened, hooked, and there's several other positions. There's other values that this feature can take. We also have the feature of spread, whether your fingers are spread or not during the sign. We have the feature of aperture, which describes the relationship with your thumb. For example, a sign that's open or closed. So as you can see, these are these will be features of a phoneme. If a sign language has these two phonemes as uh, possible hand shapes, then this hand shape could be described as with these four features, having four selected fingers with extended flexion with no spread and with aperture relative to the thumb because it's not closed. This phoneme, the one, the first one, is different from the second one because there's one feature that changed. The first phoneme had four extended fingers and the second one has one extended finger. But all of the other values for the other features remain the same. Again, notice how this is akin to um, phonemes being voiced and voiceless to a Z versus an S, where if you change one feature, you change the phoneme. 
the same in a sign language. Um, phonemes in sign languages have allophones. They have variations that depend on context. So for example, take a look at the diagram on the right. This is a fully conjugated verb in the sign language of the Netherlands, which means I visit you. Your fingers need to be pointed towards the person that's getting visited. So if it's you, the point, and you're in front of me, the fingers are moving forward. But if the verb is you visit me, then you need to be pointing at what, yourself. So your wrists would need to move like this. This is obviously not a very good articulatory position. So there is an allophone to the pointed hand in the sign language of the Netherlands, which is like this. And this is the one that's used whenever the motion goes inward, like in you visit me. So this phoneme is like this when the motion is outwards, and there's the allophone of um, like this when the motion is inwards. Outwards allophone, inwards allophone. Sign languages also have rules like phonological assimilation. So take a look at these words. Here you have post with a downward motion, and you have the word lamp without uh, motion but coming from the upwards direction. If you want to combine them to say lamp post like this, then you need to assimilate the post sign to the position of lamp. Originally post was going downwards. However, when these two uh, signs are next to one another, the, the position of this one assimilates the motion of post so that post no longer moves downwards, it moves upwards. Upwards to the position where lamp begins. So this is very similar to kutcha, for example, where your tongue uh, was pulled backwards because of the palatal sound so that it would be closer to where the palatal sound was supposed to begin. Here, the post sign is pulled upwards so that you'd be in the position where the lamp sign needs to begin. This is phonological assimilation. Uh, sign languages also have phonotactics, which is the description of which sounds can go together and which sounds cannot go together. An interesting example is the use of two hands. If you have two hands, there's only two ways in which you can use them, two configurations. The first one is for the hands to be symmetric. This is the British Sign Language word for politics. The movements are alternating, but the hand shapes are the same. Notice also in the example from Dutch, the uh, Sign Language, the side, like this, the hand shapes are the same for both hands and the motion is the same. So you need to have your hands in a symmetric configuration. Both hands need to be doing the same shape. You can do that, or you can have what's called dominance, where one hand is still and the other one moves. For example, in Japanese Sign Language, this is the word for dance. One hand is stationary, the other one is moving. So symmetrical motion or dominance. These are the only ways in which you can have signs with two hands. There is no known sign language where you have two different shapes and motion at the same time. Or at least no one has seen a sign language that does this. So we assume that um, the phonotactics of sign languages do not allow for such motions. Same as in English, you cannot have um, a V and an F as the onset of a syllable. Finally, sign languages have prosody. You can, for example, make the signs in a larger portion of the space to indicate emotion. Um, and they have ways to mark the focus of a sentence. For example, in sign languages, in the sign language of the Netherlands, you can use a raised eyebrow to indicate focus. So you can say, uh, he learned ASL, and then raise your eyebrow to indicate that that would be the focus word in the sentence. In summary, Sign languages have phonemes, which are sets of distinctive shapes or motions that you can use to tell one word from another. This would make them phoneme, and this would make the words minimal pairs. The phonemes of sign languages can be described with phonological features, for example, which fingers are selected, 
and the signs are subject to phonological rules like assimilation, making one sign more similar to the ones around it. Sign languages also have phonotactics, which is conditions of which signs can and cannot go together.